Good afternoon. As you all know, last year we worked with all school faculties to create a document that would uh, give us an idea um, what learning outcomes would be like if we focus on the five C's. And with the help of all schools, we have created a consensus document that now outlines what we may see in a student who is a good communicator, a good collaborator, you know, in the 21st century. And as a result of that, we also need to rethink how we set student learning goals in our annual uh, goal setting process and how we set our own professional development goals. And so to help you with this, uh, we have created a brief video that will show you the changes in the process, uh, the you know, reduced focus on standardized testing scores. You know, there's a lot of information that we can use to evaluate whether we are getting better at what we do in the classroom that does not involve taking a multiple choice test. Of course, assessments are important, and in some cases, multiple choice tests are uh, good assessments of learning, but we want to make sure that we don't just focus on that. And so if you watch this video, you will have a better understanding of what we expect this year in our uh, goal setting process, and I hope you enjoy the video. Rockingham County Public Schools has made important changes to Standard 7 of the teacher evaluation model that deals with student academic progress. These changes have been made to ensure that our goals process properly aligns with the RCPS vision for teaching and learning. The parameters for student learning goals have been broadened to include quantitative as well as qualitative evidence of growth. Starting in the 2018-19 school year, teachers will use the Frontline program, formerly known as ASOP, to document a student learning goal, a personal professional goal, and to provide end-of-year evidence and growth reflection. All employees will receive an email with a subject heading inviting you to professional growth. This email invite will enable you to create a Frontline ID for submitting your professional growth plan for student learning. Once this has been completed, the IT staff will merge your old ASOP account with this new account so that you can efficiently access both using the same username and password. Keep in mind that your new username must be at least four characters long and include at least one letter. So once you locate your email from Frontline, go ahead and click on the blue button to create a new ID. And of course, in this window, you'll just enter in your personal information, your RCPS email account, and so forth. Um, however, keep in mind that you are creating a new account that is separate from your um, ASOP account, uh, at least temporarily until those two are merged together. So just in the meantime, make sure that you save this in a, a convenient place. Once you click the blue button to create a Frontline ID, it should open the program up. On the left-hand side of the page, you'll see a navigation menu. Near the bottom of that navigation menu, you'll see a tab for Forms. Go ahead and click that. And from the secondary menu, click on Professional Growth Plan for Student Learning. It should be the only link that appears currently, and then that will give you access to the annual goals form that we'll use uh, this year and in future years. So I'm just going to provide a brief overview of the various sections of the form. Uh, however, we would also encourage teachers to go to the RCPS website under the Employees tab and take a look at some of the sample goal forms that have been submitted. Uh, there are samples for secondary as well as elementary in a variety of content areas. So those samples hopefully will help guide you through this new process. As you can see, the first section of the goal deals with setting. Uh, the purpose of this section is to essentially provide a student context for the learning goal. So here you want to describe the population of your class and the special learning circumstances that may apply. Uh, factors to include are the grade level uh, or the name of the course or courses, the number of students that you have, any special characteristics such as students with special needs, uh, EL students, at risk, gifted, below grade level, etc. In the second section of the form, you will need to identify a curriculum-related skill or attitude that is foundational for student success in your content area. This is simply intended to establish a purpose for your goals. 
Uh, once you've identified the purpose and the context, uh, you can move on to the third section, um, the actual goal statement itself. Here you'll describe the type of growth or learning you want your students to accomplish this year. In developing a student learning goal, we ask that you consider essential skills or attitudes that you've identified as weaknesses that you would like to strengthen in students throughout the school year. In keeping with the Virginia Department of Education's profile of a graduate reform, Section 4, dealing with rationale, asks that you explain how your goal connects to one or more of the five C's. Please refer to the 5C document that is posted on the RCPS website in order to see how county teachers have defined creativity, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and citizenship. Section 5 deals with the evidence that you plan to use. It is important to note that the parameters of this section have been broadened in order to align with division learning goals. The body of evidence for your learning goal may include quantitative and or qualitative artifacts such as instructional materials, student work samples, and or performance assessments. However, it should not be tied to an end-of-course SOL test performance. Baseline evidence might include items such as surveys, initial student work samples, and or formative assessments. This evidence can be uploaded to Frontline at any time throughout the school year. Section number six asks that you identify the strategies that will help your students make progress towards the learning goal. Please refer to content area research and or best practices in discussing your specific strategies. For example, the components of effective instruction that were previously developed in collaboration with RCPS curriculum leaders may provide ideas regarding specific methodologies to include. Once you have completed your student learning goal, please consider how this goal informs your own goal for personal and professional growth. In providing a rationale, please describe and explain how your goal is going to promote student growth by identifying specific areas of your teaching practice that you would like to improve. Similar to the strategy section of your student learning goal, please describe the steps necessary to reach your personal professional goal. This may include reading professional literature, collaborating with a professional learning community or PLC, attending a conference related to your goal, observing fellow teachers, designing a new series of lessons, taking a class, or planning with instructional staff or colleagues. The final section of the form needs to be completed before your summative evaluation at the end of the school year. In addition to providing context for the evidence that you submit, we also ask that you reflect upon the progress you've made toward your goals. Please have this completed prior to meeting with your respective administrator so that you can be prepared for a reflective discussion.